they believed in one God, but they also believed that there was another power in opposition to that God. When you have a God that manifests in different, in different ways, that we experience Hashem through different attributes, sometimes through kindness and sometimes through a stricter way of guiding the world. So you may tend to think that these forces are in conflict with one another. And the, certainly in ancient times and probably today in many places, people believe that there are vying forces between one another. Even, even within Christianity, there's the, their idea of Satan. We also have Satan, but their idea of Satan is sort of a, a power in conflict with God and opposition to God, whereas the Jewish idea is very much that even Satan, which literally means in Hebrew, the, the, the one who obstructs, the obstruction, uh, is doing so in the service of God, at, at God's command, right? So that these forces are not in conflict. Zoroastrianism, one of the, well, considered one of the great monotheistic religions of your, they think maybe even predates Judaism. No one's quite sure when Zoroastrianism, Zoroastrianism got started as a religion, but they even they believed in dualism. They were basically two powers, even though it was sort of considered monotheistic in that they believed in one God, but they also believed that there was another power in opposition to that God. So there was uh, Ahura Mazda was the, was the supreme God of Zoroastrianism. And then there was uh, Ahriman was the, uh, the one in, in, in opposition. Now, the reason I bring it up is because the Gemara talks a lot about Zoroastrianism. And people don't realize that. The Gemara records a number of discussions between sages of the Talmud and Zoroastrian um, uh, Magi, and, uh, which are their, you know, their, philosopher priest type people and uh and uh, debates of philosophy between the two and not only that but the kings of parthia which which was the empire under which the jews of babylonia lived were zoroastrians and you'll know from history i don't know if i mentioned this last week i was talking to somebody i think it was just a conversation i had with mr alto Salori about the divine providence in history is at the period when the Talmud was being com compiled uh, in Babylonia, the, the Babylonian Empire, which is really the Parthian Empire at that time, was very benevolent towards the Jews, and therefore the activity of the compiling of the Talmud could take place, whereas it couldn't take place underneath the Romans, the neighboring Roman Empire, which was at war with Parthia, these two empires, one in the west and one in the east. Uh, where the Romans were constantly quashing uh, Torah study and Torah learning. So, the, on the other hand, the, the Parthians were very benevolent towards the Jews. And uh, it was only after the Talmud was finished being fully edited that the Romans ended up defeating the Parthians. It was as though... And they weren't the most competent governors, that's for sure. And it was as though Rabbi Miller writes this, that God was just propping up the Parthians just long enough that the Jewish Talmud should be finished. And then, then the Jewish people could endure whatever would happen after that, once we had the Talmud. So the Gemara records even that the kings and queens of Parthia would send, they would send sacrifices to the Jewish rabbis and ask the rabbis to direct their servants of how to bring the sacrifices properly to God, to Hashem, because the Zoroastrians considered Hashem, the God of the Jews, to be synonymous with their own Ahura Mazda. And even though we're not allowed to bring uh, sacrifices outside the Beis HaMikdash, this is an area where non-Jews have an advantage over Jews. They are allowed to bring sacrifices in the absence of a temple, even nowadays. That means if nowadays a non-Jew wanted to bring a sacrifice to Hashem, animal sacrifice, they would be permitted to do it. We are absolutely forbidden to do it outside of the temple. They would be permitted to do it. They would just need to be instructed on the proper laws of doing it. So they went to the Talmudic sages and says, how do we bring this korban to 
God, and they instructed them because that, what, what that tells you is that even the Talmudic sages considered Ahura Mazda in the Zoroastrian religion to be an acceptable form of worship of Hashem. Um, and Rashi says as much uh, openly when he said, whenever the Gemara talks about Ahura Mazda, I forgot exactly, that. I think Hormis is the, is the term the Gemara uses for what's called in the scholarly world, Ahura Mazda, Hormis. When the Gemara talks about Hormis, Rashi says, this is HaKadosh Baruch Hu in their language, right? Even Rashi says, Hormis, Ahura Mazda is synonymous with Hashem in the, in the Zoroastrian faith, whereas Afriman was called Hormin in the Gemara. Um, Rashi says, is a shade, is a demon. So even their, you know, their Satan, the, the Zoroastrian Satan, it, it, the, the way that Judaism views it is, it's a, a demon in their religion, right? But it's not really a second deity. Even though in Zoroastrianism, there, there's this, do, why am I bringing this up? Okay, because that's why I think these words are here. Um, Kel El Yom, most high God, it, this is what I think. I didn't. I couldn't find really a commentary that addressed it. But we just said God, who is mighty, sorry, great, mighty, awesome. He has these extreme attributes of kindness on the one hand and strictness on the other hand. And we look at Hashem as being blending the two in perfection because He is Kel Elyon. He is the Most High God. That is, He is the power that is over all powers in the world as we see them no matter hi no matter how we see hashem's divine providence manifest whether it's in the form of kindness or what we perceive as kindness or what we perceive as more strict harsh type of of uh, providence we don't see these forces as being in conflict we don't see them as coming from two separate sources they all originate from one god who is above and in control of all of them. That's what I think this phrase means. Kel Elyon.